Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So we are currently in a massive snowstorm here in New York City. Um, it is the end of the month. I just got my work schedule and it is like literally just the most jam-packed schedule I've had in a very long time. So the next few videos, I may be in full pajamas, messy frizzy hair, full no makeup, glasses mode. Um, I'm a bartender, but I just picked up a gig. I'm being contracted out to design cocktails for this upcoming uh, speakeasy in New York City, and I'm so, so excited about it, but it is just consuming <laughs> all of my time. Um, but I have still been reading, and I want to talk to you guys today about I Remember You, uh, which is a, it's an Icelandic novel. Um, I guess you could call it like Nordic Noir, but this is a very supernatural spin on Nordic Noir. And it is by Ursa Sigidor Dotter. I'm fairly certain that is how you pronounce it. This book I have seen written about so many times as one of like the pivotal must-read Nordic Noir books. It's supposed to be one of the scariest ghost stories out there. Um, and I had really, really high hopes going into this. It's about, what, 400 pages? Yeah, it's about like 370 pages. It took me a while to read this. Um, and I have to say... This was not what I was hoping for from this novel. Um, I'm going to read the back of the book for you guys very, very quickly. In this terrifying tale, three friends set to work renovating a rundown house in a remote, totally isolated location. But they soon realize they are not as alone as they thought. Something wants them to leave. Meanwhile, in a nearby town, a young doctor investigating the suicide of an elderly woman discovers that she was obsessed with his vanished son. When the two stories collide, the shocking truth becomes horribly clear. In the vein of Stephen King and John Alvide Lindqvist, this horrifying thriller, partly based on a true story, is the scariest novel yet from Ursa Sigidor Dotter, who has captivated the attention of readers around the world in her mystery series featuring attorney Thora Goodmanser Dotter. Now Ursa will stun readers once again with this out-of-this-world ghost story that will leave you shivering. Um, I don't know anything about the story that this is actually based off of, so I will have to look more into that. Um, but this story is told in two parts, one from the perspective of the three people renovating a house, um, kind of up in like a abandoned, almost like a summer town, like, <laughs> like, I guess like Montauk in New York, like nobody really lives there during the winter, but during the summer it's filled and they're trying to turn a house into like a, a bed and breakfast or whatnot. And the other side of the story is told through this doctor's perspective, he kind of consults with the um, police detectives in Iceland on several um, strange cases. He's a psychiatrist, so they use him for psychiatric consultations. Um, and their stories kind of interweave. They're, uh, they're all told chapter by chapter, so you'll get one chapter that's about the three um, renovators and then one chapter about the doctor. The biggest flaw for this novel with me is that I really only cared about the, the chapters with the doctor. Or had this book been a film, I feel like the more atmospheric, ominous, ghostly encounters that you get with the, the three renovating the house alone on an island. Or I don't even know if it's an island. It's like a very just like small like remote town that you have to get to by boat. So maybe it's an island. I don't know. But um, I feel like on film that would have translated really, really well. But as I was reading it, it was just boring. And I feel like part of that is... When you have a film and you don't like the characters, it's kind of interesting and hard to watch like bad things happen to them. It's kind of like the, the Friday the 13th effect. Like you get these really arrogant teenagers, so you don't really feel terrible when Jason comes to the camp to go after them. But this, these characters were so like one dimensional, flat, and kind of unlikable. And the, the haunting that's happening to them is a very, very eerie, slow, atmospheric burn. So I just didn't care. I just felt very bored reading their chapters. And a lot of what happens doesn't really add up to the other story until the very end. Whereas the other story is this really convoluted kind of over-the-top supernatural mystery. Um, it's fun. It's pretty fast-paced, which was very different from the pacing in the renovation chapters. And I really... Um, felt compelled to read about the characters in that portion of the book, our psychiatrist and um, his detective friend. I thought they were very intriguing characters. They were not the greatest people. <laughs> um, they were definitely very, very flawed characters, but I did really like reading about them. But the book would become this almost drone for me of having to get through the renovation chapters so I could get to the detective chapters. 
Um, this book is very, very pivotal on twist endings. Um, I enjoy the twist. There's like kind of two part twist endings in this and I didn't see one coming but I definitely saw another coming. Um, I wouldn't say this book is predictable but it's definitely not gonna knock your socks off when you get to the reveal. It's kind of like, oh, okay, I see that. Um, a lot of it is a, a, almost too convenient. Like one of the things that I say that I love about the Chestnut Man is I feel like it could happen in real life whenever I read that. Um, that was my top book of 2021. But reading this, it was just such a stretch and the character development and the like overall story just didn't allow me to fully suspend my disbelief to be like, okay, I'm okay with this, I'll accept that. It was just kind of all tied up in a neat little bow. And my only other big issue with this book, um, it was very beautifully atmospheric. You did feel like you were stranded and abandoned in the winter cold. There were a couple scenes that I thought were really, really well done with the renovators in the house, um, especially um, when they realize that the house is kind of haunted and something is coming for them. I really liked their reactions and how they handled it and the suspense that was built up on those scenes and then the chapters would end. It would just kind of be like this like cliffhanger like, oh, okay, are we going to find out? And then when you go back to like pick up where their storyline is, it was almost like episodic television where all of a sudden it's just like, and the next morning! And you're like, wait, what? And then like they have like flashbacks as to like what happens like on your cliffhanger and I just, ah, it was very strange. And part of me thinks that there was flaws with the translation. In this novel, there was a lot of things in this book that I read and like the sentences were clunky and they were hard to understand and they felt very rambling. And I know that this book is translated and there were even like a few like, I don't even want to say typos, but like grammatical errors um, that just didn't make sense no matter how many times I read the sentences. So I feel like this book may have suffered from a poor translator, which I don't want to put our translator um, on blast, but there were definitely some moments where I was like, oh. I feel like had this been like shortened or refined or, you know, maybe used more like traditional colloquialisms that we have, this would have sped the story up a bit and had me more engaged. And then my only other major issue with this, and this is something that I actually appreciate that authors do, I like when authors have their own kind of folklore and rules around ghosts. I think Ronald Malfi does an amazing job with his ideology of how ghosts operate um, and you can see that consistently in both Come With Me and Floating Staircase. He really holds on to that. This book definitely has its own operating system for how ghosts work um, in the afterlife and it's actually a type of haunting I've never really seen written about or depicted in films before and I kind of liked it but I just didn't quite understand why it happened that way. And there's a character who just like kind of explains like, oh yeah, like ghosts, ghosts just become malevolent as like time goes on kind of thing, right? Like the more there are ghosts, like the angrier they are. Um, and it just, from who these ghosts are and what their former lives were and what their situations were, there's a few that I'm like, okay, I can see that. But then there's others where I'm like, I don't really know if I buy that. Um, and it just kind of sh got shaky with how like the ghosting worked and I just didn't I didn't fully understand and grasp the parameters that um, Sing Jitter Daughter set up for her ghost because I felt like there were just plot holes with it and it's something that like once she set it in motion it should have been very simple and she kind of like wove around her own rules but had she not bluntly stated what her like rules for ghosts were, I feel like it would have translated better. Like I think it, w it's, it was a moment where it should have been a show don't tell and she told and then showed. Um, but the showing didn't fully reflect back on what she originally stated. So I just found a little bit of issues with that. So this was a three star read for me. I would say if you are into Nordic Noir, this is definitely one to check out. It's a much more of a slow burn. Um, very, very atmospheric. This is like a great book to gravitate towards, towards uh, like winter horror times if you want to be like filled with like snowy and isolation and all of those themes. This is probably a good book to gravitate towards. If you want like a cool detective story that's going to be really like kind of zany and over the top without like feeling zany, um, again, this is a good one. It's kind of depressing. Um, 
but yeah it just I wanted this book to work for me I really really did and I had really high expectations going into it because I've heard such good things about it and it just kind of fell flat like this was just an okay read for me I wouldn't tell anybody not to read this but this is definitely not going to be like a book I think everybody should pick up and check out if they like Nordic Noir um, it's just okay. This will convince you to never <laughs> renovate a house in the winter though. Oh my god. Um, yeah, and I just, I feel like, I definitely feel like the translation was clunky. I feel like some of the characters needed more backstory. Like, it was just kind of, again, very one-dimensional. Like, this person is self-absorbed. This guy is unhappy with his marriage. This woman is, like, insecure. And, like, that was it. Like, it was, like, this one-trick pony for all of the characters and those were like their driving personalities and I just was not okay with that when we had other characters who were far more superiorly fleshed out so it just made them and that whole storyline just so much weaker anyways that is all that I have for you guys today I will hopefully have another review of another book I just finished up in just a few days as well um, before my monthly wrap up very very excited I'm like on track for my reading goals right now I know it's only like January but I'm on track stoked about that. It might even be a little bit more ahead, so we will see where that goes. Anyways, as always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. Depending on how my work schedule is going, I might drop a few Saturdays um, in the next coming weeks, but I'll let you guys know. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below, and I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.